Getting an internship is pretty hard. Here's how you do it anyway. During my time as a college student, I was privileged enough to get several different offers and work at various different companies. I made a video talking about my three month journey and a lot of people seem to get value from that video. I wanted to make a follow up video talking through my thought process and all the steps I would take if I were to start all over again. So after applying to over a thousand jobs, speaking to a bunch of industry leaders and watching dozens and dozens of videos on the topic, here's the ultimate guide on how to secure an internship. Before we get into the main part of the video, I want to add a disclaimer. I am not an expert, I'm merely just sharing my experiences and tips that work for me during my search. I also just happen to be interested in the topic and I've spent hours and hours doing research just to stay up to date. Not all these tips might be applicable to you, but I believe the majority of them will be beneficial. So the whole job search process can essentially be broken down into just three stages. The applying stage, the interview stage, and the offer stage. Before you start applying for jobs, you want to make sure you get a couple things straight. First of all, you want to review your resume. The purpose of a resume is to get your foot through the door. The goal is to get an employer to actually see your resume and let your skills or experiences sell you. However, not many people know that most applications don't ever get seen by an actual person. Over 75% of applications resumes get screened out or rejected by an ATS scan before ever being seen by a human. Therefore, it's super important that you make sure your resume can pass an ATS scan. I personally utilize websites like jobscan.co to understand my ATS score. There are so many other free resources you can use when it comes to ATS scans, I'll leave some links down below. However, here are some of the questions I would ask myself when reviewing my resume. Firstly, is it one page? The average tech job receives about 250 to 500 applications on average. No recruiter or hiring manager would want to nor have the time to review over one page of a resume per applicant. The next question I would ask is, is my resume readable or legible? A good way to answer that question is through the visual test. From a macro lens, does your resume look neat or organized? Can you tell the different sections within a resume? And can you read the bullet points for each work experience or project you've done? Is each section or subsection on your resume placed in a meaningful or intentful manner? Is the layout of your resume coherent based on importance? Chances are, if you don't catch the recruiter within the first few seconds of them skimming through your resume, you're gonna lose them altogether. When you're writing your points, try to make them interesting and eye-catching. Another question I would ask is what skills do you have that are applicable to the position that you want? Typically, the skills that you have listed out on your resume are what recruiters look at when they're determining if you're a good fit or not. Most people tend to have a specific section dedicated for this. I like to also add skills into my uh, bullet points when I'm talking about my work experience. The next question I would ask is a pretty simple question, uh, such as are the fonts used legible or fitting? Most people tend to overlook the typography uh, when writing their resume. I personally think this is a big mistake because the type Typography can make you stand out in a massive way. I like to use websites like practicaltypography.com to understand the topic a little better. You also want to make sure there are no spelling or grammatical mistakes. Simple mistakes like this can turn off employers altogether and ruin your chances for getting the job. Another important question I would ask myself is how are my bullet points laid out? I personally recommend using the XYZ format. By that I mean did X using Y resulting in Z. This format seems to have the most success, so I highly recommend you use this when you're writing your own resume. Most of my resume bullet points are pretty simple, talking about what I did, how I did it, and the results that came along. You also want to make sure you ask yourself what irrelevant information is on my resume. Now this one can be a little tricky because you might want to provide some personal information about yourself so that your employer can understand you as a person better. However, I personally think reducing or removing all irrelevant information uh, can increase your chances significantly. Most of the time, there's definitely going to be some irrelevant information on your resume that's not completely relevant to the jobs that you are applying to. Even if you think your resume is niche, there might be some unnecessary information on your resume that is taking up real estate that can be used for better work experience. The next step is checking or asking yourself if you have sufficient experience. Now I understand that everyone has to start from somewhere and not everyone can have relevant experience to the industry they're trying to break into. For example, maybe you're trying to break into a different career or maybe you're just a freshman or sophomore who hasn't got the chance to work in the industry yet. That's completely fine. Here's what I would do if I was in your shoes. I personally would look for related jobs on campus. As a student, you might be eligible for entry level jobs like a desk job that might utilize fundamental skills that you'll be using in the industry later on. You might also be eligible to work alongside your professor or teacher. There are many jobs on campus that keep opening up like teaching assistant or research assistant jobs, so feel free to try for that. I would strongly recommend you take advantage of these kind of opportunities so you can build relevant experience. Even if it's just for a few months, these kind of opportunities like teaching jobs or research positions can put you ahead. If you're not a student or you don't have that kind of opportunities, I highly recommend going for an unpaid internship first. Unpaid internships like this are super, super underrated because uh, you only need to spend about 10 to 20 hours a week, maybe less on these uh, internships, and you get to build your resume, work on cool projects, and learn new skills. This will definitely put you ahead of the competition. I personally recommend companies like NSTEM or Data Glacier. I noticed they've been hiring for a long period of time, so there's some consistency there. There's a lot of cool mentors working in those companies that you can learn from.
If you don't want to take that route, I recommend doing personal projects or case studies. I believe these case studies or capstone projects are an exceptional way to showcase your technical skills. A lot of students make the mistake of waiting to use projects from their classes or courses. In my opinion, by doing this, you're not only putting yourself in the same bucket or category as the rest of your class, but you're also damaging your chances by not taking action. Me personally, I would start by looking for some cool data sets that I would want to work with uh, through websites like Kaggle or GitHub and try to build side projects uh, while taking classes. You can also look at other people's portfolios and use them as inspiration for your own work. If you wanna build your own portfolio, I've made a video talking about how to build a portfolio in under 10 minutes. It's completely free and very fast, so I highly recommend checking it out. A portfolio on your side can definitely increase your chances dramatically, so don't miss out on that. I recommend starting small with a couple small projects that build your fundamental skills and then expanding from there. I recently got a message from one of you guys who decided to build an end-to-end -end machine learning project about diabetes and I thought that was super cool. Projects like this will make you stand out and display the technical ability needed for the job and also show that you're willing to learn and do things by yourself. The next tip I have for you to do before you apply is to brush up your LinkedIn and Handshake profile. Make sure to keep it professional and have a good profile picture and a clear description. You want an employer to be able to read that description and understand your qualifications and why you're a good fit for the job. I would also optimize that further by displaying all your certification, courses, licenses, or projects that you've done along the years uh, just to make you stand out. Think of anything that can make you stand out and put it on your profile. As you'll slowly progress throughout your career, you'll want to increase your network and expand your social portfolio by making connections. You can also build your social presence by posting valuable and relevant uh, information on these platforms to gain a following. Remember, the better you are at networking, the more opportunities are gonna come your way. Once you got all that done, it's time for you to start applying for jobs. When it's time to apply, I recommend using a variety of different job sites just so you can diversify your applications and increase your chances altogether. I've personally used websites like Indeed, Glassdoor, Handshake, and LinkedIn. I prefer LinkedIn, it's my main network, so I like to apply for jobs there. I think it's the easiest to use too because I have it on my phone and on my computer and I can just whip it up and apply anytime. An optional yet worthy tip is to go through your network and ask for referrals. If you have a friend or a classmate who's working for a company that you are interested in, feel free to ask them for a referral. The worst thing they can do is say no. Remember, don't put them in an awkward spot if you're not too close and always be prepared to get a rejection. Also, at around this time, you wanna decide which route you wanna take when applying for jobs. There are two main routes that I noticed, the mass application and the targeted application route. With the mass application route, you'll be applying for many jobs at a time just to widen your scope. This also means a broader set of skills with a less niched resume. The goal here is to be applying for three to five jobs every single day with a target of 350 applications by the end of the quarter. The second route is a more targeted route. You will apply for more niche jobs that fit your skill set specifically. The target here is to apply for 50 to 100 jobs by the end of the quarter, but the more jobs you find, the better your chances. Try to cater your resume to each specific job individually to make sure you have a higher chance of getting selected. Your resume should match the job description almost identically, uh, including all the languages, frameworks, skill set, and other requirements listed. Regardless of which route you took, you'll want to continuously apply just to keep that momentum going. I personally like to try to make it a habit and do this every day uh, for a specific amount of time, maybe two hours or one hour set aside, just to apply for jobs. I personally function better in the morning, so I like to do this very early in the morning, get it out of my way, and focus on the rest of my day. On top of just applying, I also like to personally reach out to employers on LinkedIn. If you manage to find their email somehow, you can try the cold emailing route. The success rate on this is pretty low, unfortunately, but I have seen a couple people get really cool jobs through cold emailing. The ones that usually work are typically very clear, straightforward, and to the point, especially when it comes to the value they can provide. Again, remember to be very respectful and mindful when you're doing your cold email or cold messages. You wanna be smart and creative so you can stand out. I personally like sending video messages because I know no one else will do that, and the employer might be keen to open that video uh, just to see what this candidate has to say. I wanna emphasize the point of bringing value. You wanna make sure you lead with the value you can provide so that they don't have to dig into your whole cryptic message to understand what skills you have, what you can do, and what you can bring to the table. Remember, the more valuable you appear to them, the higher your chances of being hired. Another minor tip I have is adding a cover letter. This is less important. In fact, after speaking to a bunch of uh, hiring managers and recruiters, I've noticed that they don't even look at cover letters unless they require additional information. If they do require additional information, that could mean your resume is not doing a good enough job. If you do decide to write a cover letter, I recommend you keep it to the point, make sure to emphasize what you can bring to the table, why you chose them specifically, and what you're expecting out of this job. Me personally, I like using ChatGPT to write my cover letters for me. I copy the job description and my resume and paste it onto ChatGPT with a specific prompt so I get a regular uh, output 
that I'm comfortable sending. This way, I don't really waste any of my time personally catering a specific cover letter to uh, each individual company, and I can just use AI to do it for me. The next tip I have is to track your applications. This is one of the biggest mistakes I made during my time looking for jobs. I personally missed out on hundreds of opportunities to uh, write a follow-up email or contact a recruiter back just because I forgot to track that specific application. You wanna keep track of basic information like company name, job description, date of application, and status. If the job description includes some basic information about the recruiter or even about the company, make sure to keep note because you can use that later on during your interviews. A lot of people tend to ask me what to do after applying. I think the answer is pretty obvious. You just keep applying until you get an offer that you like. Obviously, at the same time, you want to enhance your skill set and work on projects that you're passionate about just so you can improve your resume. You also want to stay up to date with the industry and learn new languages, frameworks such as uh, Golang or Shiny, stuff like that, just so you're more relevant. All right, the next stage is the interview slash phone screen stage. Once you've reached this stage, you're one step closer to getting that internship. Phone screens in specific aren't meant to be too technical, but just be prepared to talk about about your skills or your field just a little bit more. Remember to be yourself and be honest and speak about your qualities in a way that sells yourself. A bonus tip I have is to use your unfair advantages to, well, your advantage. For example, during my interviews, I highlighted stuff like my professional experience as a soccer player and also how I started an e-commerce business at the age of 17. These traits were unique, so they helped me stand out, but they also told a deeper story about myself, which helped the interviewers uh, make a more informed decision. You also wanna use this as an opportunity to get to know the company and the position a little better. Another mistake people make at this stage is not asking questions. Asking questions is the easiest way to set yourself apart. I personally recommend asking at least three questions and make sure you structure those questions in a way that they're gonna be unique and make you stand out. These questions can definitely help you land that offer, so make sure to make use of them. Here are some example questions that I would ask. Can you tell me the biggest problem your department is currently facing? What additional projects can I take on top of my day-to-day -day responsibilities? What is something you expect of your intern to do within the first 30 days? These questions will tell you more about the company, which ultimately allows you to sell yourself better. The next step from here is interviews. In the context of an internship, interviews are essentially an opportunity for you to meet the team and see if you're gonna be a good fit. Most of the time, you're gonna get some level of information about your interviews before your interview itself, so make sure to use that as an opportunity to do some research. During your interviews, you're gonna be asked a little bit more technical questions, so make sure to prepare for that. A good way to understand or predict what to expect is by reading the job description. If the job description mentions SQL, then you're probably gonna be asked a couple questions in SQL. I would personally start by understanding the basic queries like select from where, then I would go into more complicated things like uh, merges, unions, and window functions. I personally recommend using websites like datalemur.com just so you can understand what interview questions you can expect. You can also make a cheat sheet with all the formulas or uh, similarities between questions that you can refer to later on. Again, I think it's important to remember that they don't expect you to remember everything word for word. They just wanna ensure you understand the basic concepts so you can build from there. Another amazing trick I've used is explaining my thought process throughout these questions. This allows them to understand that you know what you're talking about and they can help you if you do get stuck. I would also use YouTube or Google as a resource to prepare with mock interviews. I know YouTubers like Alex the Analyst has posted a couple videos uh, with SQL mock interview questions, so feel free to check those out. I'll leave some links down below. All right, at the end of the technical interview, you wanna make sure you end it by asking good questions. They expect you to maximize the time allocated for that specific interview, so make sure to use that time wisely. This is where you utilize uh, the research you've done on the company or the recruiters, which allows you to ask more personalized questions that definitely can increase your chances on getting the job. All right, the last stage is the offer stage where you receive your offer. If you followed all the steps before and kept resilient, I am highly confident that you're gonna reach this stage. You did all the work and now you can finally take a deep breath and take your foot off the gas. At this stage, if you're 100% satisfied, feel free to take that offer and proceed. Be sure to ask questions about the pay, bonus, or benefits, and don't be afraid to negotiate if you wanna make the offer more meaningful to you. Remember, you can always ask for an extension on the deadline if you need more time to make a more informed decision. If you're not satisfied with the offer, don't worry, you can repeat the previous steps and use this offer as leverage during your interviews. I wanna preface and end this video by saying this journey is definitely not an easy one. There is really no quick or easy way to get a meaningful offer. Also, if you guys want some feedback on your resume or portfolio, feel free to send me a message on LinkedIn, Instagram, or X. Uh, leave a comment down below so I know that it's you and I can reply to that message. I hope you can use this video as a clear guide or a resource to lean on when you're looking for an internship or a job. If you stay till the end, I would personally like to thank you for all your time and wish you all the best. Also, feel free to subscribe if you like content like this. I try my best to post videos like this every single week, so stay tuned for more. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.